My old man used to do a fair bit of four-wheel driving when he was uh, a little bit younger. Once he had us kids, he actually sold the four-wheel drive, but we kept hearing uh, old stories, and um, he was sort of the one that pushed me into getting a four-wheel drive. So uh, once I turned 17, I had an old little beat-up Nissan uh, Pulsar, a little N13 that my next door neighbor gave me. Uh, after a, a bit of a blue with his missus, he said, here, this is yours now. Um, give me 500 bucks, so I did. And um, from there, the old man pushed me into getting a uh, full drive, and it was a Mitsubishi Triton. It was a bit of a wreck, and we sort of uh, had to get a new bonnet for it, respray it all up, a couple of new front guards. Um, back then, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I ended up with like a aluminium polished bull bar. I had some um, aluminium side steps, uh, nice aluminium roll bar on the back, and that was sort of my first introduction. I put um, a two inch lift in with the boys on the front driveway, um, and then we sort of wheels, tires. That was it from, from that moment forward. We packed up the car with the boys every weekend, and we're either at DI or we're out at some, Lake Somerset or Moogra Dam, and basically never looked back, mate. From there, I progressed into a D22. Uh, Nissan D22 and that was my first like you know it wasn't a brand new car but it was a um, reasonable car and, and that's when I sort of spent a lot more time on the tools and we, we did the two inch lift and straight into ARB then realised that alloy bars weren't exactly all they're cracked up to be so ended up with the ARB bull bar um, two inch lift kit wheel size and that's when we started doing a bit more uh, serious full driving full drive parks down at Rover Land Cruiser Park um, and just anywhere we could go. Um, after I kept braking the, the D22, I sort of went, right, I need solid axles. All these GU patrols were just cruising past me and here I am just snapping CVs like they were going out of fashion. So, um, look, the D22 did me for a good three years, um, all the way to Cape York and back in the D22. Um, so it, it had everything from uh, the canopy set up, my drawers in the back. It was a fully kitted out tourer. Um, but yeah, as we got more and more into the harder four wheel driving, the GU Patrol um, was my next purchase. And basically that was a ex ARB photographer's car. And um, it, pretty, it had pretty much all the gear on it. In between then I had a few other little cars. I bought like a Daihatsu Charade for 400 bucks as a toy just to drive to and from work. Uh, I had like a two by four Rodeo Ute, the, the V6. Um, but it's always been four wheel drives. I've always owned a four wheel drive. Um, and then from the GU Patrol, I bought the, the 76. A um, bit of a deal came up and I, I grabbed it. I didn't even know if I was gonna keep it, didn't know if I'd like it. I was a bit of a patrol man. I was thinking about dropping a V8 in my uh, Nissan Patrol and decided well, hang on, the, the 79s are a bit different and, you know, it was a blank canvas and it was right around the time Explore had sort of started. So I wanted a blank canvas to um, to build up and, and, and have something for the Explore and that's sort of where we are today. Well, um, basically, as soon as I finished school, the old man said, you've got till the, the, the 1st of Jan to get a job. Um, so a little two month window, of course. All I did was go to school, he's muck around. And then uh, he grabbed me by the ear, 5 a.m. one morning and dragged me off to work. And that was it. Uh, I was a plumber, uh, apprentice plumber. So I basically was a plumber for 10 years. Um, and look, it was all EBA construction work. So I was pretty lucky in the sense that we got plenty of RDOs, uh, so I did get to get away a lot. Um, every holiday, you know, we were either out crossing the Simpson Desert, Fraser Island, um, anywhere we could sort of go. So I was lucky that we I did get a fair bit of freedom with um, the plumbing job, lots of, lots of uh, holidays in there to get out and explore, but it sort of got to a point um, well, I guess, I guess to tell you where Explore came from, as we were doing so much full driving, like all good stories, we were having a few beers around the campfire with a group of mates and um, we basically were like, how can we offset some of the costs that we're spending on our full drives? Because as you know, it just keeps piling up and piling up. And like, imagine if we could just write it off as a tax deduction. We didn't even think about getting free stuff at this point. I don't even know if being an influencer and getting free stuff was a thing. Uh, Instagram had only just started and um, basically we decided, six of us said, oh, let's start the company. Uh, the next day there was only four of us and then a few months later there was two of us and it was me and a mate that decided to actually start the company. 
And um, while we were planning that, um, Brad from Max Tracks was actually looking at doing a film series. So I started an Instagram page called Explore 4x4 with the aim to see how quick I could build it um, so that I could maybe join Brad and be his social media guy. That, that was my initial thought. And um, after plenty of brainstorming between me and my mate Rick, who I started the company with, we sort of um, couldn't really come up with a name. Oh, this was before it was a registered company, but we couldn't come up with a name. And I said, well, I've got an Instagram following with 600 people on this Explore 4x4. And they all went, what? And they're like, well, that'll bloody do. So that's where Explore 4x4 name came from. And I, I didn't uh, pursue Brad's uh, venture anymore. They sort of went off and did their film thing and Explore 4x4 was born. Me and Rick went at it for uh, a good 12 months trying to build the brand. Uh, some people might not know, but we had full, we had our own awnings, uh, fox wings, rooftop tents. We were sort of, we had all imported from China, all shit quality. Um, we were the kings before kings started. That, you know, that was one vision for the company essentially was let's import a heap of gear, try and get it at a reasonable quality, but at the right rate. And look, I hate shitty products and we ba I basically decided I don't want to go down the route of having to import Chinese crap. Um, I really wanted a show. It's something that I've always wanted. I followed all the boys back in the day. I watched just about every bit of full drive content there was and um, you know, I wanted to have a series and I wanted to get out and explore the country um, and that was sort of my vision and that's what I was doing every weekend. Uh, I'd knock off. Saturday at 10 o'clock from Plumman, get in the truck and I'd disappear with whoever would bloody come with me. Um, and we'd take a, go away for the weekend and we'd try and get photos for Instagram. That's about the extent of what we were doing. Uh, so me and Rick sort of decided, look, we want to go two separate ways. He was about to build a house. Basically then I decided to start the YouTube channel. Uh, got a couple of companies on board and away we went and it sort of evolved over the last two, 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 two and a half years is when we I think it's two years in, uh, in about a month actually when we actually released our first premium um, edit. So from there we went from the full drive thing and look when we first started the very first video I did was very bastardized. I'd seen too much content it kind of looked like everybody else's and I realized as we sort of progressed that I just want to show off what we enjoy doing and I'm lucky that a lot of people have similar interests in that we don't just full drive we do a bit of fishing a bit of camp and a bit of wakeboard and a bit of everything and um, you know just recently we changed the name from Explore 4x4 to the Explore Life and that's basically the direction we're heading now. So it's a lot more lifestyle-y. There's, there's gonna be a bit more free diving, some scuba diving, um, and you know, we will always be four-wheel drivers at the core, and we're gonna use four-wheel drives to get everywhere we go. So obviously we got the 76 in the background. I've had this truck for about three years, and I always get towy at about the three-year mark. I wanna build something new. There's not really much left that I could do to this truck and I thought about chopping it into an extra cab or mucking around with it and basically I just wanted to start fresh again. Uh, a few things on this are getting a little bit tired. Um, so after searching and going through every possible option, uh, it may be a little bit generic, but I've gone for a 79. So I've actually just purchased the new dual cab 79 truck and um, we're in the progress of building it up now. So that's something to look forward to. Um, that's something I'm looking forward to, a fresh new build. So this, this will probably be the last big video ever done uh, with the 76, which is pretty cool. And uh, I can't wait to get out there in the 79 and just make it, make it my own. It'll be slightly different to everything out there, but it's what suits my needs and can't wait to bloody get it done. Don't forget to watch part two of this rig rundown where we take you for a full walkthrough of the 76 as well as Matt attempting our four challenges.